Good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to the place to be each and every Sunday night, where tonight, of course, we are coming to you from Magnicor for round six of season 33 of Sunday Night Lights here on Top Split TV. Got a combination of a, a track that a few folks have been uh, a little bit tentative with, uh, along with uh, the Daytona uh, weekend, the 24-hour race, leaving us a little short on numbers, but not short on quality. There's some good names still out here to compete. I'm your host, Alex McKellar, and joining me as always is the chaotic one himself, Mr. Corey Steinhauser. Corey, another great night of racing here. What is a quite a fun track to race? All said and done. Yeah, it's definitely a very technical track to drive as well. I went out and did some laps uh, earlier on this week, and uh, there's a couple of corners that I still just can't get right. I'm about four seconds off the pace, but uh, it's real enjoyable when you can get a solid lap down and uh, complete a lap around what is uh, a fairly large circuit, which is uh, pretty deceptive with some of these corners, Alex. Yeah, that's it, mate. Uh, it's a lot of unique corners here, a lot of fun uh, to have a run around here in the race. Let's go check out our driver lineup tonight. Starting with car number one, uh, Mr. Adam Miles. Uh, if I can get the thing up and running, where's the button? I'll find it in a minute. Anyway, Adam's number one out there. 9K, of course, you don't get that just by uh, mucking around. So uh, Adam joins us uh, once again as the number one seed. Just behind him, the leading ANZ driver, Mr. Sam Devantia, the cowboy, with us for another hit out, trying to show how it's done and uh of course he um uh he does put up a great fight each every week he's quite uh, calm in what he does and sets up a race quite well steph herman who showed us fantastic pace at iron park and has continued to really put the pressure on this season really upped his game as uh mr herman and uh he's uh, all over it and looking to stamp his authority on this this field here tonight captain 499 uh, Mr. Neil Gardner is back with us. He is uh, out there as car number four, car number five. Jeff Randall back in action. Uh, Warren Park was his first time back in the seat, and he was uh, uh, he was um, very pleased to be back after eye surgery. So uh, congratulations to him. Strong performance during that week. Uh, some great racing as well. Vasco Sorosky. Third of the ANZ drivers, head clown, of course. Car number six here tonight. Uh, just ahead of uh, Yannick Morale, who's car number seven. Great to see Yannick regularly back in the skips here on a Sunday night. Mate, he has his debut here tonight. Uh, is uh, uh, oh, Brian J. Kelly. Brian Kelly. He's talking about coming through and racing with us during the week. Uh, and he stayed up, or he's got up super early uh and he has uh joined us which is absolutely fantastic uh kind of a nine here where is it gone there we go yerna zorek i think this is about his third outing and he's kind of a nine here tonight great to see uh yerna out there chris wayne from uk and i back for another run he rounds out the top 10 out there corey yeah that's right alex and uh a uk and i compatriot adrian brooke uh, out there in the 11 car and uh, he had a solid run in the warm-up race be good to see what he does here in the big dance uh, we got Reno Renosuke uh, Hozawa from Japan as our 12th plated car out there and uh, just behind him is uh, team clown regular Gregory Adams great to see Gregory out there and supporting the lucky number 13 which is always a good omen for the clowns uh, behind him, not on track, is uh, Jason Wilman from OzNZ as the 14th plated car. Uh, all the way from Brazil, in the 15th plated car, we have a Beatrice Yank. Yep, let's go uh, with that, mate. I sure think that's I'm correct. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, in car number 16, we've got Nick Tullo, uh, Nick Tuller with uh, yeah, the 16th plated car. Uh, 17th plated car is Jorgen Rigterp from Scandinavia, uh, making his debut here. And uh, car number 18 is Corte Daniel from France. And uh, great to see him out there making his debut as well. And uh, car number 19, who is not on track, is Beppe Blaster from Italy. 
And uh, he snuck in with 1K on the nose, Alex. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. He's uh, stuck in with the, the old 1K. And I'm sure I'm struggling to find a camera. There we go. Of course, the camera's here tonight once again provided by Pim over at Cavacay Racing. He's done a fantastic job. I just need to drive the buttons a bit better because the cameras look amazing. Go check out Cavacay. They do the Sunday night skippies. A fantastic league there with pit stops and all sorts of strategies and top drivers each and every Sunday night over at Cavacay. Uh, also on uh, uh, on YouTube, they do live and they stream on Twitch as well. Pim really supporting us very well here this season. Uh, as the drivers get around on their second lap, it's Adam Miles leading the way with a 56-4. Uh, just over a tenth uh, behind him is uh, Sam Devantia. Uh, Devantia will be first to cross the line out of that pair. Uh, he's just coming down into the final sector uh, or the final complex there uh, to round out his second lap. And Corey looking to get through the... Uh, Monster truck style final chicane crosses the line. Uh, and he's able to better it to Fetus 56 29. Uh, Miles not far behind, though. Yeah, well, um, Miles is actually miles behind as he's uh, just coming up to 12 oh, and 13. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we'll have a look through uh, some of these other guys, although they're finishing in very quick succession. The 11 car, I think, is. Oh, no, that's the 12 car that's just crossed the line. Uh, Ryosuke, uh, Rin Rinosuke. Just go with Hozawa. And uh, he's just put himself up into 10th. Uh, the next car across, I think, is the 5. Yeah. And it's Jeff Randall who's just moved himself up into 4th. Now we go to Adam Miles. He's making his way through the final complex of corners as he makes his way to the monster truck section, as you just referred to it as. And uh, coming across the line. And he goes better by 2 tenths. And uh, we'll retake pole once more, Alex. Yeah, fantastic effort there. Let's go check out our grid just to check the final starting positions. As you said, Adam Miles from UK and I starts out of pole with a 56 dead. Uh, just ahead of uh, Sam Devante. Although decent margin there, two tenths. It is a big track, though. Nearly two minutes around. Uh, plenty of margin for error there. So, uh, or pretty space to make some error. But front row start for the Cowboy. Sam Devante, Steph Herman. Uh, starts out a third tonight, half second off pole. He'll be looking to get in the pack racing, though, uh, get amongst it and see what he can do there. Jeff Randall, fantastic start from him off the second row for gone skipping racing. Starting out a fifth on debut will be Brian Kelly. Uh, alongside him on the third row will be Neil Garner for respectful Hornets Racing. Uh, starting out a six, uh, the second ANZ driver in the field. Starting out of seventh tonight will be Yannick Morale from France. Uh, he'll be joined on the fourth row by Ewan Azorek from Central Eastern Europe out of eighth. Adrian Book from UK and I out of ninth. Starting out of tenth will be Ryunos... Oh, I shouldn't know how to say this. Ryunosuke Hozawa uh, from Japan. Starting out of eleventh uh, will be Greg Adams from Team Clowns. Chris Wayne from Gorn Skip and Racing. Teammate of Jeff Randall, of course, starting out of twelfth out of thirteenth. Tonight will be Adrian Brook from UK and I. Oh, beg your pardon, Greg Adams. No, oh man, Beatrice Yank from Brazil out of 13. Alex, learn how to read. Jorgen Ringtrip, Rigtrip uh, for MSB Racing out of 14th. Starting out of 15, Nick Tullow from UK and I. Seven, 16th off the grid will be Corte Daniel from France. Vasco Sarovsky did not set a time. He will be fuming starting out of 17th. Jason Wilman did not go out and take a lap. He'll, have, he'll be out of 18th on... Just ahead of 19th, Pepe Balsa will be the last person to start the grid, mate. That's right. And normally it's my job to butcher the names, but this time Alex is taking his turn at it. As the red lights mean rev and the green lights mean go, we're underway here for round number six of season 33 Sunday Night Lights. And immediately you can see Adam Miles streaking into the lead, taking the first corner quite nicely as uh, we start the lap off here with a huge right-hand sweeping corner for the second corner here, Alex. Yeah, massive 180. Oh, it's not the 180. That's the inside. But wrapping around and doing a full 180 is a Storl. Turn three up the big back straight here early on. Uh, up There is a little kink in it called golf. They go through there now into the primary passing opportunity down at Adelaide at turn five, which is more than, well, I suppose it, yeah, it is more, well, no, it's just under 180 degree turn. You can see they, it's very, very tight. Two by two, they go this front pack 
uh, as they progress through the middle stages of lap one. They almost look, it's a bit deceiving. It looks like it's three wide as they come down this time into the 180 at turn nine, Corey. Oh no, through the, oh, the very fast chicane. You actually go almost flat out there in fourth towards the middle and later stages of a stint as they come into the deep braking zone at the 180, Corey. The leader's now exiting that corner and again, heading up towards uh, Imola. Named after the famous Italian track, this chicane, fast chicane, again, able to be taken in fourth uh, and then sweeping around the left hand. Like I said at the start, there's so many unique corners here, Corey. It's a lot of fun to get to handle on. Oh, who's that going oh, off to I, the I, side? Uh, Sorry, I man. think that was Adrian Brook uh, yeah. that's gone off there. Uh, he's lost a lot of positions. He's all the way back in 12th and still dropping. So I think uh, Adrian either has a slowdown or uh, a bit of damage. Doesn't look like there's any damage. So I'm assuming it's the slowdown as he's gone back up to pace now. But I'm impressed with uh, Steph Herman here. He took second very quickly over to Vantia and looked to challenge Adam Miles as they were coming down into uh, Adelaide. As uh, Oh no, there's a clown backwards in the background, Alex. Yeah, it's going to be Sarovsky. I wonder if the uh, monster truck chicane's got him. As we come down, let's have a look. He's side by side on entry. I'm going to guess it's a curve. Not much on the first curve. Unsettled, but he'll grab a big bit of the second curve. And the rear will step out, I'm guessing. Counter steers against it. Uh, but that's all she wrote. Almost beached is on the uh, curves, but he's fully sideways. Uh, and that will only add to his frustration very patient there waiting for the drivers to go through and then as we return to live pictures he is now dead stone last as we jump back up to the front Corey there's still plenty of action going on up here yeah, that's right, Alex. As you're going through the replay, uh, Steph Herman got up onto the inside, going through Adelaide, took the lead. But look at the fight back from Adam Miles here. He was on the outside all the way from Adelaide through the chicane there, and he has taken the lead back. And Herman now fallen victim to Devantia, who's just moved his way up into second place in the 180. And uh, now the uh, complexion of the front pack has changed a little bit as Herman's going to look at trying to get up the inside. And once more, no, he pulls back into line. Uh, before they get to the Emily chicane. And, uh, yeah, so things starting to heat up here in the front pack already, Alex. Yeah, I just want to go back, and I want to look at that pass by Adam Miles on Steph Herman through the chicane, if you don't mind, at turn seven. He's on the outside coming into it. Side by side, they go through the chicane. He's got the inside very close to picking up a slowdown. That is brave stuff early on, I have to say. That's massive in the early stages of this one, Corey. As we return to live pictures, they're going through now what I am calling... Oh, seven's gone in the background. Oh, who was that? That was Yannick Morale, another one. I was just about to rename him the Monster Struck Chicane, and morale's gone off. Let's go see what happened to him. Again, another one to fall victim to the rear going, taking too much curb. They're beautifully, expertly avoided uh, by one of his compatriots there. But uh, back to live pictures again. A lot of, lot of respect here. The guys waiting for the field to go through before they rejoin. As we rejoin them up front, uh, Devant here now side by side on the run down into Adelaide at five, Corey. He's going to be on the outside. I suspect Adam will defend this. The one plate of car. Very deep on brakes, so the Cowboy. And we saw Miles go through on the outside of the Turn 7 chicane. Almost flat out in fourth gear, as we said. Uh, Devantia, excellent drive out of that uh, hairpin there. He'll be on. Oh, they will be side by side again. Yes, beautiful room left. And the pass made by the Cowboy. He'll have the tighter run through Turn 9, the 180. Uh, and takes the lead. Fantastic driving by both up front there. Fantastic skill, respect, and uh, beautiful pass there by the Cowboy, Corey. Yeah, that's exactly right, Alex. And I think uh, Devantia saw what Miles did the lap previous when he defended from Herman and thought, I can do that, but I can do it in an attacking move. And that's exactly what he did. Uh, with the Adelaide hairpin there, it's uh, a little bit easier to get a better run on the outside line. Uh, when you're side by side like that and it's all down to the exit just having that little bit of extra momentum because of how genuinely slow that corner is so it's great to see uh Devantia getting up there getting in front of miles but now miles will have to defend from herman once more while trying to attack on Devantia. 
And uh, this group of six skippies here at the front definitely starting to look a little bit racy as they go over the monster truck chicane and uh, we start lap number four. So it's only three complete, but that's a quarter of the race already gone, Alex. Yeah, it's uh, going quickly. These guys putting on a good show. Front pack now is uh, six deep. Neil Gardner, Captain 499 bringing up the rear of this one. It's a very racy pack. Uh, debutant Brian Kelly sitting there in the top five. He'll be pretty pleased with that night's work if he can hold that or indeed move forward as he's putting, starting to put pressure on Steph Herman right on his tail. The leaders now once again through golf. A little kink in this long flat section. Uh, Herman leaves the door open on the inside. We've got two by two into the braking zone. Uh, and uh, yeah, this time Miles on the outside of Devantia. Uh, are we going to see a repeat once again? Uh, I've not seen it cons regularly done, let alone consistently done here through the chicane side by side. Oh, a little hip and shoulder on entry. I reckon that'll be Herman hanging on. Kelly goes through, pushes the eight car. Of, oh, Kelly on the outside put, gets pushed wide by Herman. Not intentionally. They just rub shoulders on the way through. And uh, Jeff Randall says, that'll be my spot, thanks. Moves forward. He's still got a bit of draft. Uh, no, he's just outside of draft. The front two uh, at risk of running away. He's got uh, a pack of four behind him, just six tenths. That'll gobble him up soon enough, potentially with the draft. Although Herman's starting to look a little ratty, uh, ratty, no, erratic, ragged. Ragged is the word I'm looking for. Miles leading Devant here, potentially to run away with this one with a one point, nearly a 1.2 second gap, Corey. Yeah, that's right, Alex. And uh, I was having a look at the entry there from uh, my camera perspective and Randall uh, just trying to swing out wide for that chicane, just went a little bit too wide. And that's where that wheel to wheel contact happened as they go through the monster truck chicane to end lap number four. And what amazes me about this track, Alex, is how much of uh, the extra uh, tarmac bit there, the blue area on the outside of the front straight there, these guys take as they uh, tackle the track. It's uh, quite interesting to watch. Uh, especially with uh, some of the exits they get out of that monster truck chicane. Yeah, absolutely, mate. The, uh, the track limits here are quite generous, uh, providing you can uh, uh, find them uh, the right way at the right time sort of thing. So uh, we'll be here for a couple of seasons yet. So I expect the top guys to really get some more laps under their belt and to be able to exploit the track limits. So there, you can you can see the exit there for miles used all the track width off the painted surface, uh, sorry, the tarmac surface onto the painted surface outside the white line. I don't know from experience. And again, you can see them outside the track limits officially. Uh, and there's no one X there, no incident point, And your, your lap stays valid. So the more time they spend here, the more they will see is side by side in the background. And Randall gets shuffled back one, two briefly, comes back at Kelly. Uh, but as we were saying, uh, as, as Herman goes through, uh, the more the time the drivers spend here, uh, the more they will exploit those full extent or the full extent of, of the track uh, and the times will come down and the racing will only improve. Of course, we spent a season here in the Fords, the Formula Fords, while we were covering those here on a Sunday night. And the racing was actually really, really good. Spectacular finish to that one between uh, uh, the Australian driver Warwick Brown and the Japanese driver Hikoto Sasaki. Uh, uh, Brown came through at uh, turn 14 in the closing sector to take it out. Beautiful race, that one. And I expect the racing here to only improve as the seasons go by, Corey. Oh, absolutely, Alex. The more used to this track these guys will get, the, uh, the faster the times will be. Uh, we're already down to a 55.7 as our fast lap set by Steph Herman. And I'm pretty sure that was on uh, the lap just completed. So uh, Seth Herman starting to pick up the pace here as he's trying to close this one and a half second gap to uh, Sam Devantia as they go through turn three along this uh, long straightaway with the golf kink down towards Adelaide. And look how defensive Herman is as uh, he's trying to keep everyone behind him and not give up any kind of advantage to them at all. But we're going to go side by side behind him with Brian Kelly and Jeff Randall. And Kelly almost turned that into a move for two. Couldn't quite get there as he had to really get on the anchors there. But now side by side, Randall and Kelly will go as they head towards the uh, hairpin up here. Although I think Kelly just uh, gave the position back up to Randall 
and said, not this time, we'll, we'll find it out a little bit later, Alex. Yeah, that's it, mate. They've got a bit of time, though. It'll be halfway at the end of this lap, so still plenty of opportunities here uh, as we continue on and out of the 180. The guy's coming up uh, towards the very unique... Oh, I'm calling it a chicane here at Imola. It's, uh, I'm trying to think of which part of Imola it resembles. Maybe turn one, actually. Maybe. No, but turn one in reverse. I don't know. I'm trying to think. They've just named it after a great track. Anyway... But uh, we still got this pack of four racing hard with the leaders. Uh, we saw Devantia step out of the draft a couple of times just to give Adam Miles clear running to break up uh, now that they're clear to extend that. And they've added about half a second, uh, just over six tenths actually to the gap there. And uh, if they play it smart, they will have this one all to themselves as the second pack uh, will be tr doing their best to chase them down, but unlikely to catch them at this stage, Corey. Yeah, that's right, Alex. The, uh, the pace at the moment is just incredible. Adam Miles in the front with no draft, a 55-6. So times are coming down very quickly here. And uh, I guess if that chicane was modelled after anything at Imola, it'd be that little chicane after Aqua Minerale, but uh, just a slightly uh, bigger version of it so they don't have to slow down as much. But uh, that'd be my best guess anyway, as uh, the second group here still racing it out as uh, Randall now with a move on Herman to the inside of Adelaide, modelled after the Adelaide turn eight, I would imagine, as uh, they're now going to make their way down to the first of the chicanes and Randall has taken a position. In fact, I think Steph Herman has gotten a slowdown here somewhere, Alex. Yeah, it looks like it. He's dropped back behind Gardner, who's been sitting there very patiently side by side, if you don't mind, Kelly and Randall. Uh, both looking to stamp their authority on the lead of this second back. But I can tell you now, who won't be enjoying it, uh, Gardner will be sitting there saying, come on, guys, we're not going to catch him this way. I suppose you got two options. You can try and stay line of soon and catch him, or you can do this and race the thing out. And that's what these guys have chosen. I think we can see that, Corey. These guys have chosen to have a night out at the races by the... Oh, oh the little yip from Captain 499. Tries kind of to go under the inside of Randall, but backs out of it. And it may cost him that position that Herman gave him with that slowdown that you mentioned. Uh, I don't know that uh, Gardner will defend that. He might fall back in line. Yes, he does. And look at that. Kelly on debut has almost broken them. He's uh, nine and a half tenths out coming into Monster Truck Chicane. Gets good exit. If he gets a good enough one, uh, he might be able to get away, although they've just got a sniff and back up to eight tenths, Corey. Yeah, so uh, Kelly pushing for everything he's got, but he's got a couple of really drafty straightaways coming up here as well. So uh, that gap between them is just going to come down a little bit more. But the top two, Devancia and Miles, have just absolutely run away with this at the moment. Uh, and we've got Devancia on the front, so we missed the, uh, the pass for the lead. But uh, I reckon we're going to get another one here. Is Adam Miles going to the outside of Devancia as they come towards Adelaide. And he'll take that position clean and clear. Devancia clearing the throttle out, breaking a little bit early just to uh, allow a nice easy pass so they can try and extend this gap to the second group. And uh, the second group still battling furiously away. They single filed out for Adelaide there. But uh, it looks like side by side will be Captain 499 and Steph Herman as they come towards the chicane, Alex. Yeah, this time around, they've uh, got it back line of sun. I'm wondering if Herman once again got a slowdown because it's a decent. Oh, big front lock up there on the inside from Gardner. Uh, this time round, and uh, yeah, they, again, they're flirting with danger. The only thing I can think there is uh, that um, Herman copped another slowdown, and uh, it's really stretched him out because Neil Gardner is now nine and a half tenths off the back of Randall, who's uh, bridged that. Uh, it was a burgeoning gap there for Kelly, back down to four and a half tenths, closing with draft as they exit turn 14 there, Chateau de Ur. I don't know how to say that. The Chateau turned 14. <laughs> um, and uh, they're almost out. Yeah, 8 tenths, 7 tenths. It's closing up under braking from Gardner. Ooh, will that cost him on exit? No, he's sort of held on to most of it. Uh, picked up half a tenth through there uh, and through the final chicane. 
Uh, those slowdowns, though, they're plaguing Herman tonight and costing him dearly and potentially costing Gardner as well, Corey. Yeah, that's right, Alex. But with Herman behind him, those slowdowns shouldn't affect Gardner now if Herman does get another one. But uh, the battle between the two in front of them, Kelly and Randall, is about to heat up as we only have four laps left to run in this race. And uh, I just saw the leaders uh, just about side by side once again, Alex. Yeah, leaders uh, once again shaping up, but they're really, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be side by side, a little bit more racy than I would have expected. But uh, I suppose with a 4.2 second lead, you can do that with a few to go. I can't imagine they wanting to do that too much because that'll bring the chasing pack into it. But they're going to try side by side, a bit of a dress rehearsal. And once again, look at that beautiful stuff from this pair. Entirely unnecessary, other than perhaps rehearsing what they want to do later in the lap. But what do you reckon, Corey? My view is you can try that stuff early on, or you can try it during the week, because you don't want to give the strategy away at the same time. There's a bit in the background I see two by two. Noah's Ark style, they go once again on the exit of the 180. They're coming up to... Excuse me, Imola once again. They're going to stick side by side by side by side. They're going to go the whole way. Look, the track with allowing it. A little bit of a, a yip there from Kelly on the outside of Randall. They come down to 14. The Castle of Water. Thank you uh, to our knowledgeable chat crew here tonight. Uh, turn 14, the Castle of Water. Uh, they see them exit. They're still not got it sorted single file. A side by side Gardner and Kelly into the final complex here at 15, 16, 17. The monster truck chicane. They've got it sorted. Of. This time they're giving Randall the opportunity to run away as Kelly and Gardner sorted themselves out only on the exit of that final chicane, mate. Yeah, that's why it's good intense racing here in the second pack. And because of that, Randall's got six tenths now over Kelly. Although it's not big enough to really hold off from the draft. We'll see them battling it out once more. But uh, it's got to give Kelly uh, Randall that little bit of uh, confidence knowing that he could pull away with them, uh, pull away from them if they start battling so intensely behind him. And uh, it looks like Captain 499, Mr. Neil Gardner, might just do that as he pulls to the outside of Kelly this time as they were going through golf. And we're going to see a move on in Adelaide. What has... Uh, Gardner got here. He doesn't get the greatest of exits and it kind of balked him and both Kelly a little bit as they're going to remain side by side now. It's going to be how they exit the uh, chicane here, Alex. Yeah, they got it done. Uh, Gardner going around the outside, getting it sorted quite easily. But meanwhile, up front, these two have gone side by side pretty much from the Adelaide hairpin all the way through the following sector, including the turn 7 H chicane at Nürburgring. They've picked some nice names for these corners. Anyway, through Imola now. Side by side still for the better part of this lap. They go. Doing a fantastic job, our leading duo. Devanti, a little bit of lock up on the inside front, but gets it done by breaking quite deeply uh, and well sorted. How's our second pack going? Randall looking to run away with it almost. Let's check out deeper in the pack now. sorovsky has got away from the 11 of Brook, who's chased by Wayne. There's a tight little tussle there. These three look to have getting it, getting their fair share of the action. Vasco Sorovsky up eight positions from where he started, even after at some point in the race being dead last in 19th. So let's say he's up 10 positions at least. Uh, and plus the ones he'd already, yeah, so he's up plenty, uh, is what I'd say to that. And down the back here, the other battle going on is the 17 uh, and the uh, 18 uh, in reverse running order to their seedings, having their own fun game down the back. Meanwhile, back up the front, heading up the front straight, or the back straight, depending on your, on your perspective. This time, uh, it'll be Miles. No, they're going to go line astern. Uh, in there. They're not going to muck around with that. Mind you, the second pack, though, they're going to have their bit of fun here. Oh, beautiful. In and out, weaving. Almost like a dovetail joint in woodworking. The front and the rear, the front three of this pack doing, looking beautiful as they went through turn, uh, excuse me, uh, turn uh, five there at Adelaide, Corey. That's right, Alex. And uh, 
there battling has allowed Randall to maintain this six tenth of a second gap. It has started to come down a little bit as they get into these breaking zones. Neil Gardner just a little bit deeper on the brakes. It shows on exit there of uh, that 180 hairpin as uh, he ran a little bit wide. But uh, they're still in draft, so there's still a chance that they're going to catch back up to Randall here. But uh, Randall has been very comfortable here on the penultimate lap. He hasn't had to do any real racing. He's just been maintaining this gap as he goes very wide there coming out of the Imola chicane as they make their way towards the final sector of the penultimate lap here, Alex. It's going to be all the cookies on the table here in just a few moments. Yeah, Herman and Kelly uh, making that very apparent as they go side by side into the final complex here at uh, 15, 16 and 17. Beautiful stuff. They finally get it sorted. Randall now being chased down by Gardner. He was very patient in the early stages. Uh, marked his time and uh, has moved forward in that pack. Now we have front two where the race will be run and won. They're coming through turn three for the final time, setting up their run into the turn five hairpin, which of course will ultimately the run through there and the, the middle sector, I think is where it will be determined. Interestingly, Miles gives up the outside coming into the heavy braking zone at the hairpin this time though he's got it done breaking an excellent fashion there to keep the inside nose in front gardner goes through on the inside as well we've seen the outside use so effectively all night but devantia back up the outside once again through the first chicane here gets it sorted up the inside now into the braking zone at the 180 at turn nine sticks his nose in front Got the axle past the front axle of Miles and now leads it out into the, the closing stages of the final lap. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is the Cowboy leading from the community rep in Adam Miles. Miles now shows the nose up in the inside of Imola, but not up far enough is Adam Miles. And it is the Cowboy coming into the braking zone at the Castle of Water. Turn 14, gets the exit right, goes immediately defensive to run down into the final couple of quarters here. Where are they coming in the shot? We lost them. Oh, Pim. Only, only minor thing tonight is around the outside. Miles goes, but he's bra braked himself. Devantia, the Cowboys got it. Cowboys got a monster truck it through the final chicane to take the victory. Then we've got Randall leading Kelly, Herman, and Gardner's fallen right off the back of this one. I'm guessing he picked up a slowdown somewhere. And a magic first podium for Jeff Randall. Fantastic effort from the Brit. Congratulations to him. What a return. Two races back and he's on the podium. Fantastic effort there, Corey. Oh, absolutely, Alex. And I was, uh, I was watching that second pack while you were watching the front pack. And uh, it wasn't a slowdown. It was just uh, one small mistake there for uh, Neil Gardner which uh, led him to fall to the back of that pack he fought so hard and uh, yeah, won a mistake on that final lap and it went from chocolates to boiled lollies for him but uh, what great racing for our top two and that second pack of four uh, they put on a great show uh, it was almost as good as the, uh, the Formula Ford race here but uh, you know these guys put everything on the table and they did it so cleanly as well uh, there was almost no contact throughout that entire race. Only very little bits of contact here and there, which is uh, amazing to see, Alex. Yeah, I just saw back that uh, that run from Neil there through the final sector. He was giving it everything. And then unfortunately, as you say, he just uh, yeah, in pushing so hard, he left the door open. And that's the thing, you got to attack. Uh, and then unfortunately for him, uh, it opened the door for others to go through. But, uh, you know, if you, if you don't give it a crack, you don't get the result either. So, fantastic racing there by all. Let's go check out our results here for round six of season 33, Sunday Night Lights here at Magni Core. Uh, Sound of Andy, the cowboy, uh, he did a fantastic job, but got it done, forcing Adam Miles to outbreak himself into the final, the, the final complex there, starting with turn 15 and set himself up. Fantastically well to take out a, a sensational victory here tonight for Sunday Night Lights. Adam Miles, just a second off in the end, which uh, which doesn't do justice to the racing that the pair of them did. Uh, that gap not representative of the fine standard of racing they both put on. But certainly Adam locks up some great championship points there 
uh, finishing seven, second. Uh, Jeff Randall uh, drove a fantastic race himself, uh, leading that front pack where there was a lot of racing to be had, as uh, pretty evident by the gap between them and the front two. But Jeff Randall came out on top, looked pretty happy as he crossed the line as well. Brian Kelly on debut finishes inside the top five with a P4. I bet he'll be uh, pretty happy. Well, I'd like to think he'd be pretty happy with uh, his disrupted sleep patterns to get here from the US, of course. Steph Herman ran out the top five. Probably not representative of his pace, uh, but it looked like he picked up a couple of slowdowns and that really impacted himself and, and, and his, his result overall. Neil Gardner was in it up to his eyeballs, set the race, the closing stages up, and then uh, unfortunately in pushing, uh, for that podium, he's uh, opened the door and it's cost him a few at the end there. Yune Zorek, uh, the privateer from Central Eastern Europe. Uh, he, he had that off, if I'm not mistaken, similar to Sorovsky, but he's got his way back to P7. That's a great drive. Greg Adams ends up being the leading clown car in the field, finishing P8 just ahead of his uh, teammate, Vasco Sorovsky, the up and down night for Sorovsky. Mostly down, but then all the way to the up. Uh, eight positions up. He'd be pretty pleased with that, although disappointed, I know. He's pretty hard on himself. Uh, the great head clown, Mr. Sorovsky. P10 tonight went to Adrian Brook on debut. The UK and I driver finishing inside the top 10. Chris Wayne, the other... Chris Wayne, the other gone skipping racing team member, finished in 11th. And Ryunosuke, Ryunosuke, I should know how to say that, Hozawa. From Japan, the lone Japanese driver fin rounding out the SNL points in P12. Yannick Morale, after his early mistake, finishes down in 13th. Jason Wilman, who started without qualifying here tonight, he's finished in 14th. Nick Tullo from UK and Ireland abused down in 15th. Beatrice Yank from Brazil. Great to see Beatrice out there, finishing in 16th tonight. Courtney uh, Corte, I should say, Daniel from France on debut in 17th. Jorgen Rigtrup. MSB Racing in 18th, and I don't often have to do this. P19, there we go, Beppe Balasa Hussura, in the middle of the race on the telemetry, had a, a bit of a moment, uh, and finishes uh, on the tail end of the standings there in 19th on debut there, Corey. Yeah, and uh, he was actually lucky to finish, Alex. I was just looking through uh, the chat messages, and uh, he actually... Dropped due to packet loss there after the checkered flag fell. Oh. So uh, he, he was lucky to uh, finish the race there before his internet said no more. But uh, what great racing all throughout the field and uh, especially Vasco. Technically speaking, he was at the back twice because he started 17th and then he had that spin at the end of the, the first lap and uh, fought his way up to ninth, which is just incredible. And then uh, again, the, uh, the top six there and their battles throughout was just uh, amazing to watch, especially that second pack of uh, Randall Kelly, Herman and Gardner. And uh, that's definitely going to be one for the ages around here in the skips, Alex. Yeah, that's it, man. Uh, really enjoyed that. Great introduction to Magni Kua. Uh, and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, he's done, uh, it was really good to see the, the variety in some of the corners. You don't see corners like this anywhere else. And like that, that's what I mean when I say they're unique. And I know some of them are named after other places and they perhaps take inspiration from some of the great circuits around the world. But combine them all together. It's not like CODA, uh, Circuit of the Americas, which sort of had that that uh, that idea of maybe taking some of the great corners from circuits around the world and combining them. It, I've always said uh, CODA lacks a bit of soul from that perspective. This place has got a lot to offer. And hopefully we see that reflected on the, the weeks where we come back, where the Daytona 24 hours is not on. Hopefully we can get uh, a few more races turn up here uh, rather than just the diehards who put on a great race each and every week. But I know they'd love some of the uh, the other drivers here as well. But that's uh, in weeks to come for now. And this week we have uh, Mr. Adam Miles joining us in uh, in the commentary booth. Uh, for a conversation. Adam, uh, great driving out there tonight. Looked like a bit of fun once you were able to get the break there with the Cowboy. Uh, hopefully you had a good time out there at this, uh, this very interesting circuit. Yeah, thanks, Alex. And, yeah, I did have a good time. Um, always always going to kick yourself a little bit when it's a one-on-one -on -one at a track you feel like you're doing well at. But, um, you know, full credit to Sam. He uh, ran me hard in the last few laps and just... <laughs> It, you know, you have to you have to set up leading the final lap almost at the beginning of the lap. You, you're thinking about where you are into the hairpin of turn four, 
so that you can be on the right side of the track for what is it turn 17 in the final corner so just got on the wrong side where i wanted to be and that sort of just couldn't recover it through the rest of the lap unfortunately yeah i love a circuit where you got to think like that you know thinking uh, even half a dozen or more corners ahead 10 in the case you've described it it really uh really stretches the mind uh, as well as the uh you know uh, the muscle memory so to speak and um you know you guys had the time up front to be able to do that you're afforded without having to watch the mirrors too much uh with the pack behind really seeming to enjoying their night out as well so adding some of the cerebral elements in there and really able to able to stretch all the muscles in the racing arsenal uh at a circuit like this and uh, and, and the way the race played out so uh certainly enjoyed the to the the spectacle out there and uh what would you say to folks is, is it worth a, tr a drive around here certainly has some uh, a unique set of corners that's for sure i mean i think absolutely i mean i uh, i wouldn't count myself as one of these but i i think when i look to when you look at the trap map you, th you think manicure you think formula one you see a long straight with a hairpin you imagine it's just going to be a track where you wait until the last lap and then you drive past somebody into the hairpin and then you've won the race. But, you know, the racing here has been completely the opposite. All I've heard people say all week is how hard it is to pass. Um, you know, you can run both lines through that hairpin. You can run, you know, side by side through the next chicane. So it's, you know, it's it's absolutely not a track where it's easy to pass. And I think, um, I think as I heard you say at the end of the commentary, it's got some great corners. I mean, there's three chicanes in there which are all different. They've all got different speeds. They can almost go apart from the last one and go through two wide through the others so i think it's a, actually surprised me and i think it surprised others so it's it's disappointing to see it not more popular this week but you know i can understand i think if we if we do come back hopefully we can convince a few more people to to turn up yeah that's it mate i mean we saw yourselves uh, up front uh, you and sam as well as the guys behind go two by two for you know almost two thirds of the lap so uh, that in itself brings its own adrenaline rush uh, when you're competing here on the big stage. So congratulations, mate. Fantastic drive again. Great had a uh, bag full of points for yourself, uh, Paul, and then uh, so really end up tying uh, with the Cowboy on points here tonight, setting yourself up for a good championship run once again. Congratulations, mate. Great to see you out there. Thank you, as always, for the work you do for the community. Anyone you'd like to shout out to tonight before we let you go? Yourselves, as always, Koryaks. Amazing job. I'm sure I'll be watching this back very soon if I don't go back to bed. Um, and shout out to Hannah, who's always supporting me in my in my racing endeavours. And uh, congrats to Sam on the win. And uh, who picked up the third? Jeff was in the end. So well done to Jeff. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I know Jeff will be happy on his only. I think he's only second week return, uh, second or third week after eye surgery, and he'll be very happy to take out. Uh, a podium here for sure but yeah thanks again mate great to see you out there look forward to talking to you again soon thanks a lot alex there you go Corey out of miles uh showing us how it's done once again uh great racing up the front with uh with uh the, the eventual winner in in the cowboys sam devantia uh really enjoyed seeing adam have a good result and, he, and you know good description there how deep into the, the, the lap you've got to think at the start uh, to set up the overtake by the end and uh, makes it hard when you've got to run 10 corners perfectly to execute an overtake, that's for sure. Well, that's right, Alex. And uh, with the way that those two were driving around this track, I'm sure they could have gone just about an entire lap side by side if uh, the race called for it. But, uh, you know, the way that they also pulled away from that second pack as soon as they had the opportunity, they had smart racing for a few laps there, and then they really started to get into the battle with each other because uh, this track is really... It, it, I couldn't even call it a chess game. This track is more like checkers, and uh, the, the thought process that goes behind you know, is completely different to almost any other track where, you know, as he said, you know, you've got to set up for just the one corner and you know, you maybe you set it up a couple of corners in advance on another track. This one, you're thinking about it even sometimes the lap previous to uh, how you're going to set things up for that next lap. So uh, you know, a lot of thought process goes into this, and you really got to try and be that three or four steps ahead. But it's uh, it's pretty hard around here when uh, the person you're racing is also probably thinking that three or four steps ahead. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Particularly the top end of town. Well. That might, uh, that might do us here tonight, folks. Uh, another excellent night of racing here on a Sunday night, and we appreciate all the support we get both on track and off. 
Thank you to the recent uh, subscribers on the Twitch channel that we've had. Uh, we had a big influx uh, as we kick back off after uh, a, a season's hiatus. Uh, your support is very much appreciated, as is, all, as is all the thumbs up and the likes and everything over on YouTube as well. Corey, uh, we'll call it a night there. Mate, anything you want to let the folks uh, know about what's coming up for you this week? Uh, so I'm going to look at blowing the dust of, off of OVS this week as uh, Skippy's uh, at a very fun track and uh, basically a home track for everyone who lives in Australia. So uh, it's going to be very exciting. I'm probably going to uh, do quite a few races uh, around Bathurst this week and uh, I'll be putting the stream up for people to watch me lose all my IR and drop even further down the uh, list of rankings so uh, that should be interesting and then back here next week with you Alex as uh, we get to commentate on the great race itself yeah mate looking forward to that as well should be a good week and a good night out here on a Sunday night uh, of course you can join us in the discord community where we post news views and results and all that sort of stuff the top split YouTube channel is where you'll find this replay and all the race replays of the 33 seasons of Monday and Sunday Night Lights. And, of course, Corey and I will be back here next week. Same bat time, same bat channel on Top Split TV. But until then, thank you, everyone, for your ongoing support. It is very much appreciated. On behalf of the Chaotic One, Mr. Corey Steinhauser, I'm Alex McKellar. And until next time, I will say ciao for now.